Number 50, what is the value of k? What value of k results in a remainder of zero when dividing these functions? All right, so let's look at this. If I'm gonna divide uh, the, and I'm looking at this polynomial, I would try to divide by synthetic. And remember there's three steps for synthetic. The first thing is to solve the divider, solve the divisor is equal to zero. So on this particular case, my, the thing of doing the dividing is the x minus five. So I'd say x minus five equals zero. And if I solve that for x, I would just need it, oops, I don't know why I wrote three, I'm sorry, plus five, plus five to both sides. And so I have now x equals five. Now, once you do that, we write out our coefficients, write out coefficients. Uh, of what we're going to be doing the dividing the original function here. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm dividing by five. So let me put x equals five here. What I'm going to do the dividing with is x equals five. And my coefficients, I have one x to the fourth. I have negative 13 x cubed. I have k x squared, and you need to be checking for missing powers. If you have a missing, you need to throw in a zero as a placeholder. That would be x to the first and plus 10. Okay, now step three is we do mama. Step three, let me do it right here, mama, which means we multiply, add, multiply, add, all the way down. So the one drops, and now we multiply. One times five is five, and I'm gonna add these together, and how do I get negative eight? And then I multiply and I get negative 40. Okay, now I don't know what to do with this k. So what I'm gonna actually do is go down back to my problem and it says I have a remainder of zero. Remainder of zero. That means over here at the very end, my remainder needs to equal zero. Well, for my remainder to equal zero, that means 10, positive 10, plus or minus some number gives me zero. The answer is it has to be a minus 10. 10 minus 10 gives me zero. So if I got, had to have a minus 10 right there, Remember, it's kind of like doing the opposite of mama now because I'm going from back to the end. That was the adding. What would I have to multiply by five? Five times what number would give me negative 10? Five times what number gives me negative 10? And you can also say negative 10 divided by five is what? And the answer is negative two. Five times negative two is negative 10. So negative two has to go there. Now that means negative eight plus or minus some number gives me negative two. Negative eight plus or minus some number gives you negative two. This would have to be a positive six. Negative eight plus six would give me negative two. So now I know that this number must be a positive six. I would be asking myself, okay, five times what number would give me a negative six? Uh, and so looking at this, uh, that's gonna be tricky. What number is gonna be here uh, to give me a five times what number gives me a six? Did I, let me, let me check and make sure I wrote everything down right. And I've checked and my numbers seem to be accurate. So coming back, uh, five times what number gives me six? Five times what number gives me six? And that's the way you're saying this is six divided by five is what number? And uh, let's go over here and clear off some of this. Six divided by five is 1.2. And so that's what the number needs to be right here. A positive 1.2, I'll put a plus there. So Coming here to solve this now, the algebra k minus 40 has to equal 1.2. Or finally, uh, what I would do here is add 40. And my answer would have to be 41.2. Now, a way to determine if we got this right is when I graph this, what I'm going to do is graph these two equations. Uh, you shall see if I type this in as k and, and do it right, how the graph will look different when I type this in. So let me go over here to my graph. What I'm gonna do is type in this equation and we're dividing here. So in the numerator, it's x to the fourth minus 13 x cubed plus k x squared minus eight x plus 10. All that divided by x minus five. Uh, where did I get the five from? I'm sorry, that was supposed to be a k x. And I wanna add a slider. 
I'm gonna go home here and I want you to see what happens. So as, as I change my K, what I should be having is it looks like I have these asymptotes down here. Now we said the number, there's an asymptote in there at uh, five right now. But if I have the number perfect, what should happen is this asymptote should disappear and this should snap together. We're saying the answer is 41.2. Notice when I do that, how the, the break just kind of disappeared on this graph. Uh, I don't know if, let me get this a little bit. Let me change one thing here. I'm going to make the X's stay narrow while the Y's go further apart. You can see how as I change my K value, there's this break in the graph. But as soon as I got to 41.2, the piece snaps together because the graph has now only a uh, removable discontinuity right there because they could graph cancel out. So my K value would be 41.2.